I want you to be in study of the entire chapter 3 of Colossians. All right. But with the message that I do have, it really has emphasis on 1 through 17. And that's why I really want us to look. And because it's so extensive and it's such a long reading, I'm really going to do just verses one through eleven and I if God permits and if it be his will I'll deal with twelve through seventeen but let me read verses one through one through eleven if ye then be risen with Christ set those things which are above Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the sons of disobedience. In the in thee which ye also once walked, when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these all these anger wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man that is renewed in knowledge and the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And I want to talk to you about the life choices of a Christian. The life choices of a Christian. As it relates to this day and age, it still remains a fact that the Christian has some choices to make after they become Christians. We all have choices to make when we are born and we receive the ability to know right from wrong. But as Christians, we still have some life choices because even though you have secured your salvation when you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you still are free to make a choice on how you live in this life. And the Bible is teaching us here now that there are some things that first we have to put off before we are able to put some things on. And it says, if, the, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Letting us know that the life of the Christian, his livelihood, his lifestyle, his personality, his character, comes from the things which are from above. 
the life in which we live, earthly things or earthly mindsets are opposers of a godly and a heavenly mindset. The mindset of an earthly individual is described here in the text in chapter and verse 2. And, and it goes on when it says, set your, um, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. It's talking about an earthly mindset. And the mindset in which we have, the Bible has described as idolatry. In verse 5, it says, we are dealing with fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And when we look at idolatry, this evil and uncovetousness, we have the tendency to look at an idol or an inanimate object in which others may worship. But this idolatry, this evil worship, is also a mindset. When you look at idolatry, it does not have to be anything that you see. It could also be that which you hear and that which you say. Because it talks about putting off lying and putting off evil communication or corrupt communication. Idol worship is only sin. We can become covetous. We can become those that have what we have and not wanting to share it. And that's covetousness and idolatry and idol worship with the mind. And we also do it with our actions. And the reason we have to put these things off is because it is our responsibility to help those that have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because really at that point in life, they have no choice. They are not in, just in idolatry or idol worship. They have become idols. Because you are in sin and salvation has not been granted to you. And all those that have rejected our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, have to serve under idolatry. That is their God, and they are their own self-made gods. And that's what people in society try to make themselves be now. When they say that we don't need God to die for us on the cross. We can live the way we want to live. There is enough in me to where I can live an honorable life without God making me an honorable man. That's idol worship. And really I'm also talking about for the believer, I'm talking about demonic oppression. Whereas the unbeliever is in demonic possession. And I've got to let you know that they both look the same. And they both have the same effect. When the, when the believer is demonically oppressed, he will never be able to get the, the unsaved saved. When the unbeliever is demonically uh, possessed, he's unable to reach Almighty God for salvation. But it is you as a vessel, as an oracle of the Father, who has to put off these idolatrous things so that you can reach those that are lost. And again, what I'm saying is, if you look at society today as a whole, you will realize that we look just like the world when we are demonically oppressed. We are suffering from a form of idol worship. You have many people, and I was just talking to a lady at the airport on yesterday, and she was saying how she had walked away from church. And the reason she left church was because the people in the church were so judgmental. And they were so harsh on her and she felt uncomfortable. 
And it seemed like everything that she wanted to try to do for God, everybody else put it down. And it was a hurtful to me to have to admit that she was right in some occasions, and I had experienced it as well. It hurts a believer's heart to know that he has not pleased the Father because he has taken on the mindset of the world. And it's tough to convince one that the people in the church house, that is not Christianity for the reason that you left the church. It's because a Christian has fallen into idol worship. When the Christian thinks that I know what I'm talking about and you can't do this and you can't do that. And you have to be this kind of way when you're in the church house, never searching the scripture and knowing that this person has come because they are broken. This person has come because they're looking for a better way of life. And because your mindset is wrong. And you've taken off what God has for you, and you'll see it after verse 12. You've taken off compassion. You've taken off humility. Or you don't possess humility. You don't possess love and tender mercy and kindness. But you're issuing out hate. And you're doing it in the name of the living God. Because you are his children. And that's what we're dealing with here in Colossians on today. You can, it says that you should mortify, therefore, your members. Now, when we say members, that means a part of. That means who we are, and, and, and that, that's really family, basically. But it says to mortify, therefore, members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affections and with the word mortify the definition here means to embarrass or humiliate uh -huh. bible is telling us again that we ought to humiliate these things we ought to embarrass inordinate affections we ought to embarrass evil desire and covetousness uh -huh. and you say well pastor how can you embarrass it and how can you humiliate it how can you mortify it the only way you'll ever be able to mortify hate is with love whenever you want to mortify evil doing you've got to deal with right doing and that's why I say you've got to read the entire chapter because it's going to tell you to take off these things and put on some good things. The good things of life which come from up above. And again, I look at society now. And, and if you want to look at demonic oppression and, and, and demonic possession, you take a look at what's going on in our society. Even in the streets, it seems as though everybody is violent and enraged. And when you come into the church house on the same issues, the children of the living God are divided, upset, and enraged. But let me tell you something, and, and I always use this example because it's a current issue. We're looking at those that are getting upset with police officers, and they're responding by attacking innocent police officers. But then we also look at the police officers. They are attacking innocent civilians. But let's see what's really going on in that situation. The church is saying that the people are just fed up. And, 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 and that's a normal reaction. It's not a normal reaction. For those that have put off the ways of this world, that's abnormal because we know as believers killing one another because you've been killed is not what God asked you to do. And the problem is we do not have humility and love for one another. You ought to be able to love those even though they do wrong unto you. That's where the change takes place. 
And I look at the police officers again and the, the court systems. The Bible says that we ought to obey the law. But don't you know it also says that the law is for lawbreakers. Now those that break the law should be put in jail. The problem is with society today is we put the civilians in jail for breaking the law and not the civil officers in jail for breaking the law. But don't you know even if you put both of them in jail for breaking the law, it really doesn't solve the problem because killing is still going to transpire. It's still going to take place. But if you listen to the word of God, God doesn't only save you out of your condition. He saves you from some bad conditions. Because he's going to tell you if you put on some love and some humility and some compassion, you won't have to end up losing your mind and shooting and killing innocent people. That's why Christianity is above the law. The law really is closing the gate after the horse has already gotten out. But God is preventive. He said, if you abide in me, and if you do the will of the Father, and if you walk in the way that I have instructed you to walk, you won't suffer these things. And even if you suffer them because of some evildoer, you don't re recompense evil for evil. Because our God is a God of faithfulness. He'll watch over us. And he'll protect us in the midst of it all. And I've said it but time and time again. I can walk out of this door and lose my life from a hand of a robber. It could be in a car wreck. It could be any manner of things. We don't choose how we die. And it makes no difference to me. Sorrow not for me because I'm dead and gone. Because I'm going to reap my reward. And it's all because I've taken on the affections from God, which is from above. I understand that no matter how my life is taken from this earth, it is committed to be with our Lord and Savior forever. That's why Paul says to live is Christ and to die is gain. And that means that there's no loss when you abide in Christ Jesus. But again, we ought to humiliate or embarrass the effects, uh, the aff inordinate affection and the things that are evil, which things, uh, things sake that the wrath of God cometh on the sons of disobedience. Disobedience, not unbelievers. The wrath of those that are disobedient. And I have to say that because we have children that are disobedient. We ourselves are disobedient unto God. But it doesn't say that we're not his child. We're not his children. But it also lets us know that wrath is going to come on your life. I told you, I can't tell you that God is just a giver of every good thing. But he's a giver of good, every good and every perfect gift. And you know a perfect gift for a disobedient child is chastisement and he's letting you know now that when you be disobedient wrath is going to come about in your life how many of us as believers have believed in the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ but for some reason we just can't get that blessing that we're looking for and it may be because you are not humbling yourself before the father you're not obedient unto him and, and just joking around, some people want to be rich and have luxurious things. And because God hadn't given it to you, you trying to get it by the lottery. You trying to get it from the boat. You trying to get it from, from, from Boja City. Or you're headed down to the Choctaw Casino. But don't you know God has it in his hand? And if you're obedient unto him with small things, He'll bless you with so much more. But because we are God's children, he knows us from top to bottom, from the crown of our head down to the bottom of our feet. 
And I'm so glad that he just doesn't cast us away because of our disobedience. Because some of us have lost all of our youth. And he has told us to come while you're young. Because really that's when you can do the most work for the Lord. But some of us rolled in here. Some of us come to the house of the Lord on medication. Some of us can't do much but say amen. And it's because we have despised the days of our youth. But don't be ashamed because I'm glad you made it. And because you despise the days of your youth, you still can testify and say God has never left me, nor has he forsaken me. And don't you know that what he'll do in your old age, he'll make your amens just as vital as your walk with him in your youth. Because it encourages somebody to know that God never gives up on you. When I look at those that have wasted life, those that have lived rowdyous all of their lives, but now they're in the house of the Lord. They really can't say much at Bible study, and you really can't let them teach a Sunday school. But I'm just glad that they know that I'll humble myself and take on his humility. I'll take on his kindness and his good character, and I live the rest of my days for my God and my Father. Amen. For which these things, wrath of God cometh upon us for those that are the sons of disobedience, in which we also once walked. I just want you to know God knows and I know too that you ain't fooling nobody. That's why he say, in which you once walked. Simply put, you ain't always been the way you are now. God again lets us know, I know what you've been doing. And I even see the hurt you brought upon yourself because God ain't putting trouble on you. Some of the troubles that you're facing is because of you. But God still loves you enough to say when you come to your senses or even while you're down, broken down on your knees, look up to the hills from which cometh your help. All your help comes from the Lord. God is saying that that because of who you are, I must be who I am. And he's sitting there as a full fountain, ready to fill an empty vessel. And he's saying, but first you've got to empty up. First you have to put off the things of the world. And I'm going back again to society. When we look into society, society ought not to look at us and see the same thing. They're searching for a way out. And you have already found the way out. And once you get out of it, you ought to have your hand stuck out to bring someone else along. And that's what's going on into society. And I taught about it in a Bible study that we're looking at the great falling away. We're looking at others that are turning away from Almighty God, our Father. And we are the ones that are falling into apostasy. Those that are unbelievers are already out there. Those that are believers are starting to follow the ways of the world. And I see that this is going to be a two-part message, so get ready for next Sunday. We are falling away. We are beginning to look just like the world. And, and, and the travesty is we can't help anybody. And we've lost what we have because of it. And when you look at society, don't you know that there's somebody out there now that's a step away from committing suicide? And we are the answer. We are the ones that have a God that's able to get your mind right. There's someone now. There's one child away from becoming a pedophile. And all we're doing is sitting here praying about it. And not talking to them. Don't you know that you're a, a cup of coffee away from changing somebody's life? Don't you know your one conversation of everything is going to be all right? To keep this person from going and shooting up some more and killing innocent people? That's what God has called us to do. But you can't put it off if you're thinking the same way. 
you fed up and you fed up. And I was looking at the young lady who was, was very disrespectful to the police officers and I believe she lost her life. Everybody's saying, well, you couldn't expect much more. And, and what do you expect the way she was acting? But nobody had compassion to think about what was going on in her mind. She had children. And she's been watching innocent children killed, just like you and I. And then she was also looking at her skin color, knowing that racism had been a part of her life. You've got to learn to have compassion. Anybody that's not an unbeliever and anyone that's demonically oppressed will lose their mind if they don't get their hands on Jesus. And you've got to have compassion. I'm not saying what she did was right. I know that it was wrong. But to me, it looks just like somebody that has lost their way. And every time you lose your way and lose your mind, the response that you make is always going to be negative. And it's not going to look right to the unbeliever, and it's not going to look right to the believer as well. And I, that's why I say be careful because of demonic oppression and demonic possession. And because we are oppressed, we're saying in our mind that she got what really she deserved. You couldn't expect anything different. But humility and love, compassion, understanding, and wisdom lets us know that we got to sit down and teach them about Jesus. We have to teach them about the delivering hand of God. We have to teach them to put off their mind and set their affections on things above. That's what the scripture is going to tell us here now. Set your affections on things above. Don't let what's going on around you conform you and have you into thinking that you can fix it and you can make things all right. Because as we can see, both are in the error at this time. The church and society. And have you noticed nothing has gotten better? And I notice you're getting a little quiet on me now. Because this isn't normally how I preach, but I'm really trying to drive it home. I want you to know that in order for you to have that enjoyable life, in order to have peace in your life and contentment in your life, it's not by changing what's going on around you, but it's about abiding in Christ Jesus. Because he has let us know that things are going to get worse and earth is going to pass away. And, and really, you can't fix what's already being torn up that God has said is going to be destroyed. And, and we have put our affections on things of the earth. We want a better lifestyle instead of a better life. We want to have earthly possessions, never considering what we have in our heavenly possession. We are using our own mind, and we're walking in our own might, and it's causing us destruction. We have gotten away from what God has called us to do. And I know, again, I'm driving this pretty hard at you, because I want you to go home and sleep on it, but I want you to wake up better. I want us to understand that it is our conversation with those that we don't trust, that we don't know, that we don't personally know. It's our conversation in Christ Jesus that will draw them out of this situation. We have no answer to stop death because death has always been and it always will be. And you can't get to heaven except you die. And, and the, so the message for the believer is get them salvation. Get them soul deliverance. And then you can get them some, uh, some physical deliverance. That's what peace is and that's what joy is. That's some physical deliverance. But that comes after soul deliverance. And then I close with this. What does it take to grant this peace in the life? Or where does it come from? Never forget that it, everything that we have comes from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the one who sent his son that he hung, bled, and died for all of us. 
And for those that have received the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, we are the ones now who've been commissioned to go ye therefore unto all the world, preaching, teaching, and making disciples. We are the ones who's offering a more excellent way. And the more excellent way is Jesus. He is the one who will take care of you in the midst of all these troubles. He is the one who will guide you to Calvary and lead you on home. That's the message that I have for you at this time. And I'm just telling you some of the things that you ought to take off. But just be assured there's some stuff that you got to put on. And I'm going to tell you about those things on next time with me. But you ought to be encouraged and study the word because the things that we put on, really no man can take it away. You've got to drop it and walk away from it. I'm really getting excited. I can go a little longer, but that's all the meat that we can stand today. But the stuff that God puts on us,